You work out regularly? Yes. Doing what? I weight lift. Weight lift, okay. Yeah. Uh, anything in, in particular, like you're doing deadlifts? And I actually don't do don't. That, that, deadlifts that often. Okay. Do you have any problems with like your low back or anything? No. Okay. okay. So using my hands to work on gluteals is completely fine. I'll sometimes use like a soft fist. I think that works well. I think a knee works even better. If I was working with a first time to me uh, new client, I might use like a blanket or a sheet. No, that one looks better. I like that blanket better. Uh, sometimes I can get away with a pillowcase, but in my case, you know, if I'm working with someone new, she just feels more comfortable. She feels covered, especially the first time I've worked with her. If I came in with an elbow through the blanket, it dampens the pressure, makes it not as sharp. I'm just going to come up. How's this right here? Okay. Now, I think she can get away without having the blanket here, but I just wanted to give that as an option, um, especially since we're not used to using our knee. When I'm applying pressure with my knee, I could be on the patella. I could be at the side of the patella. I could be at the bottom portion of the patella. I could be at the patellar ligament. I could be closer to the top of my tibia, really complex structure. Does that make sense? I could be in the flesh over here. It depends on what feels comfortable to you. When you apply pressure with your knee, I don't want you to be uncomfortable. And that includes our, our viewers at home. Hey guys, we're in Brownsville uh, doing table tie. If you guys have any questions, feel free to write below and I'll try to answer as I can. How's the pressure there? It's there. Okay. Now I've still got one foot on the floor, but I'm, I'm coming up. If I wanted a little bit more height, um, if I had, can somebody grab that stool without knocking over the camera there? Mm -hmm. So either I would drop the table down or I could lift a little bit of body weight up to be able to come in at a slightly different angle, okay? I also hooked my foot behind my other knee because it helps me stabilize a little bit. How's that there? It's good. What's your name, by the way? Mariah. Mariah. I'll try to remember that, Mariah. How's the pressure there? It's good. Good, okay. Um, using compressive force through a knee is a very different structure than an elbow. Very different structure. Do you prefer that there? Do you like more pressure like over? Over. Over. Right there? Yeah. There we go. Now, if this guy slid, what would happen? Ah. This is where it gets kind of like you're talking about Ashi being on the table sometimes. It's a little disconcerting. Now, do you want pressure there or do you want a little bit closer down to your tailbone? So let's say she didn't even like the deep compression. She wanted some jostle. It takes a little time to develop enough core strength to be able to do this. You can also, you know, <laughs> vogue if you need to, whatever. <laughs> Clients can see you because they're face down in the face rest. <laughs> Being able to apply pressure. I can come around to the opposite side. Um, here's the other option. And I wanted to address this. I'm going to go ahead and take this off so you can get a little bit better view. I just wanted to give that as an example. If you decide to get on the table, I have never worked on this table before. I'm not nervous about it. It doesn't bother me because this is a very safe way to get on the table. And this is something I have to address because I see people in YouTube videos just get up and run around on these things. It makes me very nervous. I don't know what kind of table it is. I don't know what kind of pressure it can take. And you guys at home, look how sturdy that is. That's plyboard. That's not even a sheet of plywood. That's like, that, that stuff will crack. If I put my knee down through the center of one of these squares, my 230 pound body will crack that. The difference is, can I sit around the perimeter? Can I put a knee around the perimeter? The perimeter is safer and here's what happens. If I'm around the perimeter, no big deal, right? Now I've distributed body weight through her. It didn't make me nervous at all. How's the pressure? Good, okay, now if I decide to come up into the gluteals, right now I'm at the top of the hamstring. See, I always do this. Why do I give the audience my keister? I don't know how I do that. I always manage to. I'm, I'm gonna walk my knees up into the gluteals. But now the, the sweet spot is this. I've stacked body weight. How's this? Yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah. I'm going to give her a little bit of weight right in her rotator cuff. And now my knees are like elbows. If I'm going to get on the table, this is a fairly safe way to do so. The challenge then is this. If you work at Massage Envy, you just got fired. Mm -hmm. Massage Envy has a corporate policy that you we must keep one on foot on the floor at all times. Interesting. How's the pressure there? That's good. You want more to the right or the left? Uh, whatever you want me to. Okay. I can take more pressure. She can take more pressure. This is almost all of my body weight. And she's like, I can take more pressure than this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now in her case, I'm gonna I'm gonna vary it just a little bit. If I press along your spine here, how's that? That's good. Okay. okay. That down. If I if I press it. here and then that, how's that? And that's awesome. What I'm doing is I'm I'm pushing through her chest and then kind of tractioning my legs down towards her feet. <laughs> now then, does that take practice? Yes. What you're doing? Normally, it's, it's, just, it's just core strength and like learning how to leverage. Now, if I wanted to change the angle, so long as I feel safe, tons of options, okay? Once I get comfortable, you know, could I come around to the side? This is all mat work, guys. The yes. mat work. How's this? That's good. So it's like you're like balancing she, a little bit. She likes that angle more, so I'm going to change it. How's that there? That's good. There we go. Now, how do I feel about someone who's never been on a table jumping up and doing this? Not very comfortable. Not, not as safe. Yeah. It's a little bit little bit different. You tell me, right there? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now, I can also feel with my knees, but there's a lot of complexity about how this works. This is mat work. This would be much easier if she were on a mat and I just used my feet. I'm just gonna stack my, my hips, right? But I'm trying to give you options Ooh, right there? Yes. <laughs> well, my balance is good, and I've done this for a long time, right? I know how to contract muscles through my core to be able to maintain stability. Right there. When I decide to get off, it's pressure on the outside, and I can just hop down. Mm -hmm. Everybody's height, everybody's weight is a little bit different. When you get on the table, the main thing you have to be careful about is the center of the square. If you're around the perimeter, you know, if you're sitting, usually safe. Sometimes these guys are weighted for 1,000, 2,000 pounds. I know what they're doing at the factory. They put 2,000 pounds over the whole surface. They don't put it in a point. Mm -hmm. It's like it will hold someone who weighs, you know, a ton probably mm -hmm. without, you know, collapsing. But the center of the square, how firm is that? Yeah. Yeah. And here's the nightmare. Are you ready? When you're me. Now, table, cream, glide, nudity, the person is draped, I get on the table, the table breaks, I grab them, the table collapses, they pull on me, fall on me, they're naked. Do you see the, the nightmare Seinfeld scenario kind of descent into chaos? Yeah. Getting on the table is very safe. I don't have any issue with it. If you decide, okay, I don't want to get on the table, I would drop the table all the way down. I would use something that was stable. You can't use a roller chair. Mm -hmm. You can use a knee. If you say, mm, I'm not really ready for the knee. I, I think it's too much. Then possibly what I would do is I would come in, and we've already built up to this, okay? I'm going to lift her up. Great little space. How's that right there? That's it. How's this? Yes. Yeah. Now, if a client was draped, would we want to do this? You, I mean, you, you can. The women always say, well, sure you could. And I'm like, <laughs> no. But I'm, I've been, I'm always talking from my cultural context. Yeah, yeah. When, she's, when she's clothed, she feels safe. Mm -hmm. right. This is also something I might not do on a first time client. It's also something that it would depend. Like if I worked on Gloria and we had already worked an hour and a half, and I could tell, she's like, more, doesn't matter. I don't know what part you're using, just please keep going. Then I would come in and do this. Now, what happens here is you're working the gluteals. You're able to use some more pointed pressure after we bust it up concrete with our knees. But now I can actually grab and start to lift the leg. I can start to mobilize the hips while I sink in. How's that right there? This is actually my favorite part. How's this? <laughs> yes, thank you. That's thank you. Good. 
This is a much pointier tool. I'll usually use the elbows for cleanup work. I bust up Precise, concrete. Like precisely. I bust up concrete with my knees and my feet. I, I get. It seems like sometimes I get more done in less time because they don't wince with broader, bigger structures. Yeah, I told you guys that earlier. It also just takes pressure off of my my hands as much as I can. Holy moly! <laughs> You've been lifting weight with whatever whew, glute medius that is. Yay! How's that? That's good. Good hearing. Nah. There's some hearing in the other car. Now, what would be the difference between doing that <laughs> and coming out to the side and doing this? Oh, yes. Uh-huh. No, the other one feels better. You like that one better? No, the no. Other. Why do you like the other one better? It feels more comforting. Mm-hmm. I why, does, why, do you feel, why does it feel more comforting? Because that's the way we like to lay on our stomach. In your stomach. cradle. Getting more cradle. touch. The, the biomechanics change. And the thing is, she might... <clears throat> if she was someone new to me, she might prefer this version. You guys know this. You do this all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She might prefer that because it seems to address the issue with not, without being as intimate. In her case, she's like, no, I want the... She could say, I like it when it's the, the extra body contact. Mm-hmm. It just depends on who you're working on. The nightmare situation, again, somebody falls off the table... The other one is the client assuming somebody's being untoward. If a guy watches this video and sees me do that, and then just goes and tries it on the client without thinking, you can just wind up in a real weird situation real quick. When I get up on the table, do com- customers and clients expect me to get on the table with them? No. That's not what we think of as massage, and that's where culturally there's a little bit of a battleground with Thai massage where I'm trying to ease that transition in the West. It's not really about the platform. It's not really about anything except giving the therapist more tools to work with. I just want them to be able to save their bodies. Getting on the table is fine. It's very safe so long as you're around the perimeter. How do I feel about people standing up on the table and walking around? With Ashi, you have bars. Do I feel like that's safer? Yeah, you've got something to hold on to. Yeah. The table could collapse, and you go, oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> when you don't have any support structure, like how would you feel about turning the people loose in core curriculum to do all this? To do this? Yeah. yeah. Oh, for this, but I mean to stand up on the table. Uh, and, do we have pulls? Yeah. So <laughs> yes. the version I showed you of the psoas stretch a little bit earlier where I'm using your hands, I normally do that on the, the mat with using your legs and feet. Some people want to stand on the table and do that. There's no support structure. I'm like, no, 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 no. You just got to be mindful of both culture and then also, like, what are people expecting? What What's safe? Do you guys want to try the gluteal work? Sure. You can drop the table all the way down. You can also get up on the table. You can imagine that if you're getting up on the table, even if you have the table dropped all the way down, it feels safer. To you, right? Because there's less, less room to fall even if you did. Thank you for letting me demo you demo on you, Mariah. So, do you guys have any questions? Maybe at all. Hopefully, you got to hear that. My uh, new phone seems to have a better uh, camera, and I haven't listened to the audio yet. But I'm assuming it comes through pretty well. If you guys have any questions, you can write down below, and I'll try to answer as I can. I need this. No, no, I mean I need the. So between Sarah and Andrea, you guys can like work out who's gonna work. Sarah, do you mind hanging out, or you just wanna? Oh, it's up to you. Yeah, I'm cool with whatever. Okay, I just want to make you guys feel like you're both. Yeah. I just want you to feel like you're both able to give and receive without. Yeah.
you can look around, you'll be able to figure out very quickly what people are doing, and we can come over if you need help with it. Um, using my hands and gluteals, like Gloria is a massage therapist. If I came in and used my hands, is that okay? Yeah. How many how many of you guys do undraped gluteal work? Even even Alex does. Um, I like working on gluteals through sheets or clothes. Um, I feel like it's more free and open, and I have more advantage to be able to mobilize people to access stuff without concern about being considered untoward. I like it. It works really well for me. With this, I think you've got a choice to choose, because maybe he does the undraped stuff later, mm -hmm. after he's worked with the client a few times. But now he's got clothes on options to like have the client soften up towards him in the way that Alex works. We can um, set up a table and put like a little escalator around it. Aww. Right, so you can rotate you around. You just have to go this way. Just step off. It's like a sushi restaurant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is this, this one is this? Anyone need it? Sorry. No, it's okay. I just don't know if you need to. Just, uh, you know, swipe this back. Decline. Try. Oh, yeah, you swipe. Hey, guys, we're just doing some uh, glutial work, table tie class, and round today. I'm going to try to go live a little bit each day if I have a chance. Uh, the new phone looks like it's giving me much better video quality, so I'm excited to be in the, the Rio Grande Valley to teach. If you guys have any questions, feel free to write below. And I'm happy to answer. If I don't check in uh, now or answer now, I'll get to it later. <laughs> So, so try this. You got weight there. No, I'm thinking get on that board there. Sure. The office. Oh, I feel like okay. if I have wider, it but gives me a little right more right base right. of support so instead of having my hand on my knees. I mean, my knees. Okay. That feels good. Yeah. Okay. He wants more pressure. He wants her body weight stacked up high, sinking down and in. That's where we have to give her this. So careful. And you can move that if you need to. Oh, yeah. There you go. Now, the other option is, because I started even with her, She could, she's smaller than me. She's more petite than I am. I put all of my body weight into her, and she still wanted more go. pressure. It's, this is a very different structure. It's a much larger, broader structure to use yeah, this in a gluteal than a knee, I mean elbow. Mm -hmm. Much larger structure. It really depends on the person, and what I do is I respond to what she says. Mm -hmm. She's like, I want more. I wasn't afraid I was gonna hurt her. I hear that a lot from therapists, no, they're afraid. I have, I have a lot of clients that are a lot smaller than me, and they want me to get up on the table and step on them. They're like, I want all their body weight on me. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like small, like petite little things. I'm like, yeah. Now, Alex, how's that pressure? That's good. Is that what you wanted? Yeah. It feels good. Take some anger out. And they're like, yes! They're my favorite Press along the spine. She has a chance to lean in with her knees, and then she can slowly start to mobilize her knees in various ways, meaning she can move higher up on the sacrum, lower on the sacrum, it just depends on where he wants to feel pressure. Yeah, Claudia, it's something you have to be careful about. People getting on the table is something I'm actually a bit nervous about, and it was why I decided to do this quick demonstration through Facebook Live. Mainly, with most tables, it's around the perimeter. Be mindful of the table you work on and the parameters. It's also a dealing with culture itself. Yeah. Also, uh, when you're standing beside the table you know, with a little stool, this allows you to get started and figure out if you're going to have enough balance to do it safely. How's the pressure now, Alex? Yes, all, all of her body weight. I'm so sure. Yeah. 
thing. Wow. So they bought the farm and then they could do this as well. And then, yeah. No, yeah. And then I also have my toes for cats too. Okay, do I have a point on this? People find this feels really good too, maybe not in the gluteals, so just out the hamstrings. Feels nice Ooh, and big, yeah. broad, and stable. Yeah. Um, if you want, you can do it in the palms. Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> if consumers have never had this sort of work and you get up on the table, it can be a little unsettling to them. You just have to be. You know, consider the people you're working with. Maybe okay. I could use the, the version with a stool with one knee. Mm -hmm. I could use the other side, and then I'd go, Hey, Alex, do you mind if I get up on the table and use both knees? No. Because I've already done one or either or, he's like, Oh, okay, yeah, sure, I want more. Then he, he gets a choice in, in the matter. I also don't want therapists to go and do this in some facility and like get fired because they, they saw me <laughs> no, do it on Facebook Live. They encourage it smooth. Hey, Grim, how you doing? The need with my fists, I still use all the time. I just tried to give you a version you can use your knees just to get you off your hands more. Normally, if their head is turned to the right, I like to the right side because when I lift her up, it's like not as much strain like on her cervical spine because of the twist. So you can come over to this side, and then you'll lift her leg up. And what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to lift her and start to slide, just like she is. There you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and then all two gluteals like right along with the sacrum right there. And then yeah, you got that mobility for the leg if you want. Now when you guys do this, how did, how does it feel as a giver when you guys do this? Yep. Yeah. Do you like it? Do you like it? I like this. This better. You like that better than? Yeah, I like this better than being up oh, high. Okay. Yeah. It just feels more safe. Well, I don't know this table. Okay. I know my table would hold me. There you go. If that makes sense. Uh -huh. so, yeah. Total sense. Because oh, we reinforced my table. Yes. <laughs> I think this is all wonderful if your clients are into it. Oh, 100%. If it, if it works for them. There's a lot of little. Cultural pieces and it depends on who you work on. Hey Lulu, how you doing in Scotland? I love that. I think most of my ancestors lived there. It's just wood. Yeah, it's wood. It's sure it's 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 a, yeah. Yeah. And glue. So much cheaper than getting a whole new one. So, Claudia, if you join the subscription service, the Reboot Insiders Club, I go into a lot more detail about how you structure things. 
I also have a tendency to do the table portion, the clothes yeah. portion first. And then if I've done this for 10 or 15 minutes, then I can ask the client if they want to undress, get under the sheet, I'll leave the room so they can go ahead and get on the table. I tend to do the table tie portion first and then let them go back to deep tissue if that's what they want. Nine times out of 10, what will actually happen is after I give them the table tie portion, I say, hey, do you want to keep doing what we're doing or do you want to do deep tissue? They'll say, oh, no, I really like what we're doing. And that's how I create a table tie client. I hope that makes sense. But there's more information about it on the subscription service. I document a lot of my classes. We're actually recording this on a much higher quality camera. Um, at the moment, it'll go up on the subscription service. Man down. <laughs> I showed you how to do this on a mat, you'd go, oh, dude, this is so yeah. much less work. Yeah. <laughs> Even this is more work than what we do on a mat. We used to use our feet. You saw me in the demo if you were here earlier, just use my feet and jostle. I sometimes find that you just catch more flies with honey. If I try to sell a new service to a client, they might not be as interested, but if I say, hey, take off your shoes, lay down on the table just like you are, I wanna move you around and find out where we're gonna work. That works and it means that I'm able to transition somebody to table tie without calling it that. Hey, Christine, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask below. <laughs> if any of you decide that you want to drop off your Instagram or so, whatever else, just go up. Well, it's just, it's just about style, right? So I think the kind oh, no, of what good. she's yeah. doing. Yes, exactly. So like she's more erect. Is this she's more important? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. There you go. There you go. Uh -huh. And then you can use both legs. You can use this side to, to get like more of the outside and then you use the inside to get more of the outside. So if your hips are faced this way, different. What happens if your hips are faced this way? Towards her? Mm -hmm. So this way? Mm -hmm. Changes the angle, changes the position. Oh, okay. If you come in from here, it's probably easier to get in the gluteus medius. Yeah. More to the side. Yeah. Yeah. Does that feel good? Totally still, it still feels better. <laughs> I, feel like I'm awkward. I feel awkward. Okay. I think, I think, Why does it feel awkward? I don't know. I feel like I'm, I think because I'm self conscious sure. of this. Yeah. And that's, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Really it's, it's a and yeah. And also, I mean, you may, you know, agree, you might have a shorter table whenever you yeah. do it. Excited over there? Lord. <laughs> Lower. I think you need to lower the table. And you'll oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. It would help.
table side brown too. I'm gonna try one on the other side. Let me okay. see if it's, if it's, I feel like, um, you know, because I have problems with this little bit. You also notice that I didn't, didn't tell you which meat to use. It depends on what works well, best. I just had it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you too. Piriformis is a uh, pretty dead square in your keister, so using a big broad knee is usually a little bit easier to receive than an elbow. It's a great way to access the area in the gluteals. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So on this one less. Uh, yeah. well, let me get a little more control in here. Okay. Alright, so here we go. Does this feel okay if you put your arms on the side? Yeah. How about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, better. So then. Same area, just a different tool. Right. Um, I usually don't try to push students towards a specific conclusion. A lot of it just depends on Alex's body mechanics and what's going to work best for him. In Gloria's case, she's trying to use her body in a way that works. She has a challenge with one of her knees. What she's going to do is she'll be able to work around it and she'll actually be able to strengthen the muscles around her knee and sort of rehabilitate herself as she's doing the work. That's how it actually works. You have, you have to work within your own like physical limitations. Yeah. I had an injury to my right knee and never stopped working. I was actually using the practice to strengthen and mobilize around the area while I was working. Yeah, we, we have bodies that will, in, in their own way, break down. Um, <clears throat> I learned a lot about myself and about the practice by working on myself through changes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, like I had an injury. Okay, well, how do we work on it? I had a rotator cuff problem, really good rotator cuff stuff now. If you can work on your own stuff, especially if you have a pain management practice, huge. Mm -hmm. Clients resonate with the fact that we have or had an issue that they have. Oh, you had rotator cuff surgery? Me too. Mm -hmm. They're like, whoa, now you're the expert, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, Kyung. Hey, how you doing? Good to have you around. <clears throat> so if you were down like this also, <clears throat> this means that your hip and your knee are about level, so your pressure is over. When you said you wanted more pressure, it's because you wanted the hip stacked on top, right? right? Gravity pulling down. Huge variance in pressure and leverage. Oh, yeah. I will try to do a little bit of Facebook Live um, each day from class. Um, Monday and tomorrow, we're here in Brownsville. And then Wednesday through Friday, we're going to be in McAllen. 
uh, for intro ties. So I'm going to try to do a little bit each day and give you like a little insider's view of what we're doing in class. The full recordings will be on Teachable as a part of our subscription service. I will try to put a link uh, down below. But if you're on my Facebook page, you should be able to scroll down and put those links everywhere so people can sign up. We have 180 hours on our subscription service, and so certainly by the end of the year, we'll have over 200 hours available for $7 a month. Also, hopefully before the end of the week, we're going to launch our CE class, Carpal Tunnel Syndrome. It's going to cover work on a mat, on a table, and some self-care so therapists can work on themselves. I like this even more on a mat. I feel like it's even a little bit more versatile just because of the leverage and positioning. But it's still a really no, nice version. I think that this one thing when you sit between someone's legs, I've had people look at a photo of this and kind of. Really? Okay, I can do we don't want people to think something else is yeah. going on. And I think once you feel it, you go, oh. Right. No, this is, yeah. Totally, to totally different, uh, totally <laughs> different sense. What are you guys fighting over here? What's going on? Break it up, break it up. <laughs> I'll try it on you. <laughs> okay, now the big debate. Okay, so if you're watching this from Austin, your tacos aren't very good. Because I'm in Brownsville, and I'm going to go out. I'm not eating a lot of starch these days, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a sacrifice for tacos. I don't know what y'all are doing with tacos in Austin, but they ain't a Brownsville taco, baby. Listen, <laughs> Ultimo Taco blew a hole in my brain and they never repaired. I don't know what's going. I don't know what those little tortillas are made of, but that little Mexican lady in the kitchen, I want to go hug. It's like, thank you so much for preserving the, the, the tortillas of your people. Um, where do, where should we go to get tacos in Brownsville? El Santuario. What is it? El Santuario. Yeah. El Santuario. Oh man, yeah. they're they're uh, the the, the, fat, the duck the duck the duck one. Yes. Yeah. Ducks and the soft shell one. crab. Ooh. Looking at me because I'm not rolling my. I mean, it's only it's only it's only duck and soft shell crab. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, pork belly is. El Santuario. El Santuario. Yeah. Santuario. Yeah. Okay. Is yes. it C E N? Are they close by? Yeah, it's right off the expressway. How far is it from here? 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Probably. Yeah, 15 minutes. Just check. 10, 15 minutes of traffic. Because I thought, I was like, I moved in from Louisiana to Austin. Austin introduced me to taco culture, and I'm like, oh, they're like, tacos are way better when you go down towards the border. And I'm like, how will I? How? And then I went to Taco Ultimo Taco. It was like right next yes, to my hotel, yeah. and I went in and went, Whoa, "What? What is this?" It little? truly is. The I was like, "Oh my God! Yeah. If I could export this taco to Austin, I'd be a billionaire." Yeah, <laughs> they have quail, they have duck, they have the pork, shrimp, uh, soft shell crab. But and plus their beer selection's awesome. Yeah, the oh. Mister Taco is good as well. Sounds sounds good. So what else in town? How like how does Ultimo Taco compare to other places? Not as much. Uh, I think I think they're the I think it was Ultimo Taco, Mr. Taco, and then like Santa yeah, is brand new. It's newer. Yeah. yeah. Well, Sa Santa Aria is more of a specialty. Yeah. Specialty. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. we were wondering where we were going to eat, and we had the taco discussion, which is. <laughs> yeah. well, you need to try that place before you go back. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they got seafood options. Yay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hey, Ibrahim, it's nice to have you around. I think you're writing in Arabic. I wish I could read it. I have to translate it later if I get a chance. Pressure's okay, Mariah? Yeah, it's Yeah. You, you took the all the pressure from me, so I'm taking you take it from her. I don't think Jen's going to hurt you. So I will probably see you guys tomorrow. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if you have any questions, just write down below. Um, I'll try to do one of these at least a day if I get a chance. 
Um, we're also filming it. You can join the subscription service. Either I'll put a link below or you can scroll down through the feed. You'll see the uh, link for the subscription service. It's $7 a month. And we're adding a Carpal Tunnel CE class this week. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I appreciate you, and we'll see you again soon. Yes. <laughs>